Hello, my friends. It has been a long time. Uh, it feels like months, and maybe actually it has been months. Um, it's been uh, it's been weeks uh, at the very least. Uh, how are you on this twelfth day of September? I hope well. Um, fall is starting to uh, show its leaves um, in Middle Tennessee right now. Uh, temperatures are still a little bit warm, but they're starting to, the edge is rolling off, right? Um, so it's kind of nice. And actually, when I took my dog for a walk a few days ago, leaves were starting to fall. So it was kind of kind of lovely. Um, wherever you might be, I hope that you're doing well. Um, we have a good topic today. This has been on my mind for several months, and um, I am looking forward to talking to you about it. And in the meantime, if you would make yourselves known, that would be so helpful to me. That way I know who I'm talking to. I see you, Brad Highland. Hello. Hi, John Gardner. Hello to you. So happy that you're here. Um, and, you know, I provide these prompts just, just so that we don't have any dead air, <laughs> right? As if, as if that's possible with me. I'm, I'm quite the talker. Um, but I want you to know that you're always welcome to ask any question that you might have at the moment in the comments and um, and I will get to them. So uh, so feel free to ask whatever you um, whatever's on your mind. Hi, Maggie. Hello. Happy to see you here. Um, <coughs> Lori. Hello, Lori. How you doing? Everybody good? <clears throat> I'll assume so. Um, all right. So we're going to talk about demos today. And I want to preface this by saying that I am putting together a workshop uh, for, for the end of October um, that is going to cover this topic, demos, elements of, elements of a great demo, in depth. And I'm also going to provide opportunity for a demo review um, <clears throat> for those of you who are interested in having me um, take a listen to your demo. Um, uh, which I know sounds sort of scary, but uh, I certainly don't want it to be that way. Um, it's a piece of what I piece of what I'm after is to demystify the demo process and um, take it out of the realm of the scary and into the practical. Um, so that is a piece of it. I think I believe the workshop is set for uh, October 28th, Saturday. I think we're going to start at 1 p.m. Eastern, so that is uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, and then from there you can figure out your own time zone. Um, but I think that it is, um, I think that's a pretty good time for just about everybody. Um, Brad Highland, you're at the beach for the week. Well, hello, I'm going to the beach next week. I'm so excited. I'm going to Rosemary Beach, which is just, out, you know, it's in the, um, it's in the Gulf. Uh, it's in Florida, in the in the Gulf. I'm so excited. I've never been to such a beach. I'm a Pacific Ocean kind of a person, and I have been missing my ocean very much living here in Middle Tennessee. So, I'm really excited about um, going to experience that beach. Really, really happy. Hi, Beth. So happy you're here. Really, so happy to so happy to see all your names. Um, okay, well, let's talk about demos, shall we? <laughs> I, I hope to just demystify them a smidge. So, hi, Genevieve. So glad you're here. Um, so, demos are, demos are an ever hot topic. We need them for our business. Um, and we need some iteration of them, no matter where we are. Uh, in our voiceover career. Uh, if we're just beginning, we need something to represent us. That's, it's a calling card. It's like an actor getting a headshot um, and having a bit, of a, a bit of a resume, those two things together. Um, and if we're sort of, I hate these terms, but if we're sort of mid-level in our career, we've been at it for several years and we're starting to make a little bit of money, uh, I, I should say, um, we're starting to book <laughs> now and again. It's kind of hard to, uh, to make money in voiceover, <laughs> um, just so you know. Um, and then, of course, 
if we are um, if we're moving along in our careers and we're ready to to make advances either to top tier uh, spaces in the pay to play arena or whether we are uh, ready to seek agency representation, whether we're switching up uh, agents, um, whether our agents, our long established agents have said, hey, uh, you know, kick that up a notch. We, we need something that more accurately represents you. Everybody needs a demo. Um, but the requirements for those demos are different for everyone. It's very different if you are seeking an agent than if you are just getting started. And I think that is, um, I think that's where the confusion lies because those two people, for example, they don't need the same thing, right? Um, and demos are expensive. Um, I think they're more expensive than they need to be. And I hope in my workshop that I can offer um, some alternatives that are less expensive that help that will help people on their way um, so that we can get something up and running. And, you know, my favorite quote of all time, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can, Arthur Ashe, um, so that people can start where they are. It's really, really important. Um, so, you know, we get, we get conflicting, um, we get conflicting information from people in the know in voiceover land about how, you know, you must have a professional demo. If you are going to do voiceover, you must have a professional demo. And then we get, don't make a demo until you're ready. Don't spend the money until you're ready. It's like, well, uh, then what do I do? What if I'm, what if I'm just beginning? Um, what if I've only been at it for two years, three years? Do I, am I ready? Like what? what constitutes ready, you know, for what kind of, of demo, right? So it's all, it can all turn into a big blur. Okay. So, um, at the moment I want to focus on the, the, the elements of a, of a great demo. Okay. And so I, so take this from wherever you are on the path of your career. Okay. Um, So take what works right now, okay? That's that's really what I mean to say, all right? So let me just bring up my own little note. Okay, so I wanna lay out the elements of a, of a great demo, okay? The first thing is talent. We have to have talent, right? We, we have to have an affinity for doing the work. Okay. Now, talent, I think, is raw. Okay. And so because one has raw talent does not necessarily mean one is at the top of their game, right? I think when I started this at age 23, I had some raw talent. And, my, and, uh, and so my first demo was reflective of that, right? Okay. Um, but the demo that I just worked on a couple of weeks ago is a million times better than the one I did at age 23. I was where I was at age 23. I wasn't, I, I didn't have the capacity to do what I do now, right? So talent is an intangible kind of a thing, okay? And talent does not necessarily mean you're booking everything right now and that you're, you're the sort of, you know, the on fire VO actor that everybody's talking about. It's not, that's not what I'm talking about. It's really that you have an affinity for the work and a capacity to read. Those two things are, are crucial. Okay. The second thing, and, th and this I believe is the hardest thing. This is the hardest obstacle to overcome. And I think it's a problem in demo making right now. Um, and it's something I really am trying to figure out how to address, but I will say, I'll just say what it is. Unique, compelling, well-written copy appropriate to the talent. Unique, compelling, and well-written copy appropriate to the talent. You'd think that would be sort of easy, but it isn't. Okay, number three, all spots on your demo need to represent who you are and what you're able to do right now today. 
They're not necessarily to show the breadth of your versatility, right? We're not in a commercial demo, which is really what I'm talking about right here. Let me clarify that. I should have said that at the top. Um, in a commercial demo, this isn't about your versatility. It's about showing who you are. What needs to be versatile, if you will, is the copy, is the production for each of the pieces on your demo. But there ought to be a through line of who you are in that demo, right? We're not adding character voices to a commercial demo. Unless that's all you do in commercials, unless you're a stand-up comedian with a wacky voice, right? And all you, all you do are characters, okay, then, then all of your pieces are gonna be funny and character driven, all of them. And that's your through line, that you're funny, that that's who you are, right? Okay, so they need to, re the, all spots need to represent who you are and what you're able to do right now today, okay? The fourth thing, high production value, okay? It has to sound good. Um, our hearing these days in the world of audio I don't care if you're a professional or an amateur. Our expectation, our ears are fine-tuned, right? So even people who aren't in production necessarily have ears on them and we can hear when production is not good, right? So high, high production value, okay? Um, number five, your commercial demo should, or, and promo demo, commercial and promo, should be no longer than a minute 15 preferably a minute, no longer than a minute 15, no longer than a minute 30 for a live announce demo or an animation demo or a gaming demo, okay? And no longer than two minutes for narration of any kind. And if there's any doubt in there, shorter is better. We have MTV brains. It's an old reference, I know, but that's when everything started to change, when when visuals and sound cues just started to move rapid fire, that's when our whole system, you know, just like broke down and we need to be entertained and we need to be entertained quickly, <laughs> right? Um, let me come back to you in case y'all are saying, I can't hear you. <laughs> that's not happening. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, so those are kind of the basics right there, okay? Um, and each of those things, you know, I, I could talk an hour on, uh, you know, um, but suffice it to say, I'm not going to, not right here, not right now. Um, talent and a capacity to read copy, unique, compelling, well-written copy. The de each spot represents who you are and what you're able to do right now, not to show the breadth of your versatility. The versatility comes in the writing, not in, not in what you do in a demo, okay? High production value and then time constraints. One minute to one minute 15 for commercial, okay? Um, so, what else do I wanna say about this? There's so much. Um, I think I wanna get in just a, a little bit to, um, okay. Genevieve, you're here. Can I talk about you? <laughs> I want to talk about you. I want to talk about your demo for a second. It's all good. Don't be afraid. Um, <laughs> let, let me know, okay? Um, because I, I really want to talk about the time, the time, uh, the length of a demo, and what a difference it makes, okay? So, dear Genevieve, you know what you're doing right now, Genevieve? You are trusting and you are being brave. And, I, you know, I appreciate you because I'm in the South right now. Um, okay, so, so Genevieve Gregory um, sent me her demo, okay, and um, wanted to, wanted my feedback on it, right? So I want to say that, that this demo was made by someone fairly new. Correct me if I'm wrong, Genevieve, if I get any of these details wrong. Someone who um, doesn't necessarily spend most of their time making demos, right? They do make demos, but that's, they're kind of getting themselves started in the field of, of demo making. And so 
Uh, so this particular cut of the demo was two and a half minutes long, right? So that's, so that's the first thing I said, like, and she had gotten, Genevieve had gotten feedback on the demo that uh, it was a little bit one note, right? That there wasn't uh, a lot of variety, okay? Um, and so I'm thinking to myself, if I'm, as, I'm, as I'm evaluating what she's saying to me about her demo, I'm thinking to myself, well, what is that one note? Might that one note be your note? Might that be, um, might that be the essence of who you are, but there's too much there? There was obviously too much there. It was two and a half minutes. Um, so, 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 so this is what I'm thinking, right? We can often get feedback on our demos that, that we think, oh, that's bad. That's a bad, like my demo's bad and I suck because so-and-so said, you know, it was this and that, right? And it's like, wait a second, let's like reevaluate a little bit here. What's actually inside of that critique? What can we glean from it, right? So I asked Genevieve if I could edit her demo. She said, sure. <laughs> so I took about 30 minutes and I cut it down to a minute, okay? I cut it down to a minute. And it turned into a snappy, peppy little demo. I did no other production, nothing. I just cut the thing, right? Sorry, my mail is going a little crazy. Um, I, just, I just cut it, right? So it, tur it turned into a minute long demo that showed the essence of what Genevieve does right now, today. And all it needed was an edit, right? Um, and, and again, it turned into a usable, functional demo representative of what Genevieve is doing right now. Five years from now, two years from now, Genevieve might make a completely new demo and it'll sound completely different and it will be better than the one that she did two years ago because that's 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 how it works these demos that we make are not our last demos maybe it's our first maybe it's our 10th maybe it's our 20th we're gonna keep doing them so we have to take it out of the realm of Oh my God, I'm, I'm about to drop $2,500 on the demo. Ugh, you know, um, I, I, let's, like we, like we have to just drop the veil, okay? Um, I'll, I'll point to myself as an example, right? Um, I did a, a brand new from scratch, out of whole cloth, a uh, promo demo with Eric Romanowski in 2019, 2019? Oh my God, 2020? This is a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, from scratch, right? So there it is. So I dropped some coin, right, to, to do this. Um, and now begins the process over the course of time where I'm not wild about that spot anymore. I'm going to take that out. And oh, you know what? I did that spot last year. I like that spot. It kind of fills the space nicely in this in the demo, right? So I take out an old piece and I put in a new one. And all of a sudden my demo is refreshed. And it is keeping current, right? Because I'm I'm adding the work that I'm doing, right? As I'm going along, right? So ultimately, this is where we want to get to, where we are taking, we may start at a baseline and then we're taking the work that we do and we're adding a piece here and we're adding a piece there and we're rearranging to put this piece in front now because perhaps it's at the end and it, get, it gets listened to less often, right? That's, uh, and save every demo you've ever made, my friends. I have... I have a Dockers spot at the end of my commercial demo that I think I did in the late 1990s. That is, the read is totally current. So sometimes I draw from other older demos and I put them in and 
I rearrange and poof, I have, I have a different demo, right? Um, so I also want to say, because I'm sure that there are, are some of you who are like, yeah, but I'm not working. And so how do I get new stuff from my demo? Do you have auditions that you love? Do you have auditions that you were like, that was so me, that was perfectly me. I love that spot. Wish I would have booked it. I didn't. Use it. You can spend 50 to 75 bucks with a good engineer and say, can you please create a spot out of this? I did that on, a, on an audition that I loved so much for something. I, I put it on my video game reel. It wasn't an audition for a video game, but it sounded like it came from one. It was for a, um, a radio drama, right? So it was acting, right? So I took that, I gave it to my favorite engineer, Kevin Cleland, and for 50 bucks, he created a spot and I put it right into my, uh, my working um, video game demo. Again, we're con it's constantly evolving, right? So this whole idea of, oh, I need a whole new demo. I need a whole new demo. I got to drop 2,500 bucks every two to three years. No, you don't. You absolutely do not need to do that. Keep an eye out for the, for the auditions that you're doing that you really love. Save them. Save them. Okay? Um, let me see if anybody's telling me anything right now. No. What, is everybody just like rapt attention here and paying attention to me? <laughs> Any questions? Anyone? Um, let's see. What else do I want to say about this? I feel like I get on these little tangents and then I forget where I am. Um, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so I talked about the fact that we're going to make many, many demos over the course of our careers, right? I, I can't even count the number that I, that I have done. Um, let's see. Okay, I want, what I, I want to talk now about um, those of you who, who are at the, at the beginning of, um, of your careers, okay? What do you need if you're at the beginning of your career that you feel like, okay, I'm getting started. I feel like I have somewhat of a handle on what I'm doing, but I'm not ready to really make a full-fledged demo on my own. And frankly, perhaps I can't afford it because <laughs> they're insanely expensive. Um, so what you want to do if you're, if you're getting started, again, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Okay. So if you're heading into pay to play sites, okay, what you need there is again, just a representation of what you can do right now. Okay. In a certain sense, you're providing yourself placeholders, right? For when you get to the point where you are ready to, um, to, uh, to put in something that's a bit better, right? Or that you feel like, oh, that I like this more than the thing I had up before, right? They're placeholders, okay? And because you're just getting started on pay to play sites, you are, it, it is highly unlikely that anybody is gonna come to your site and audition you directly, right? Send you a direct request for an audition. What you're after in the beginning is to get the auditions that are kind of ca their casting calls. And what you want is a presence on the site with demos that hold your place with good keywords, right? A and a completely filled out profile. That's what you need. And so you gotta have demos if your profile is gonna be complete. And, that and having a complete profile with demos will allow you to become part of the search engine process, right? That's what you're after. And so record something in your booth that doesn't have beginner gear. Remember I talk about how there's no such thing as beginner gear. You need a good quality microphone, a good interface, and you need to record clean sound, okay? And there are, there are good microphones at every price range, right? But we're not recording this on your iPhone, for example, or the, you know, or the interior sound system on your computer. We're not doing that. We're using a microphone, a professional microphone. Okay. So record yourself a 20 second snippet, a 30 second snippet, 
And if, if you have, you know, a program where you can add another track, put some music behind it, right? That's appropriate to the spot. That's all you need. Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Okay. And then as time moves on and you begin to audition, you'll find things that you audition for again, that you may not book, but you save it because that's not a bad spot, or I sounded good on that, or I was proud of that, or whatever it might be, right? Start to accumulate those things, right? Eventually, you're going to get work. It may take a while because that's the nature of the beast right now. Um, but then you can slowly start to improve and upgrade your demo, right? And when you have gotten to a point where you are working, you have established clients, um, or if you're, if you're at a place where you're working and you feel really confident about what you're doing, you're getting really good feedback and you got the money, then you can start to consider the possibility of making a professional demo, right? And then that's a whole nother subject of who do you hire, how much do you pay, all that stuff, right? It's a big, big question. Um, <clears throat> but I really want to demystify this whole thing of uh, how do I begin, you know, and what if I can't afford? I, I can't, and I just want to relieve you all of this notion right now. I cannot tell you every voice actor I know, whether they're beginning, intermediate, advanced, have been around for 20 years, 30 years, everybody that I talk to is like, whew, I am not working right now. Uh, things are so slow right now. I am thinking about getting, a, a you know, another source of income, fi finding a, you know, a day job, if you will. I can't tell you how many people I know. It, it's, it, it seem, it's very prevalent right now. So take heart. It's not just you. Okay. It's not just you. Um, so, um, so that is, that for me is kind of where it sits right now. Like in terms of the, the, the whole trying to, trying to demystify the, uh, the whole demo issue, right? And when do you, when do you need a demo and what kind of demo do you need at the particular point in your career that you are? Okay. Um, trying to think, I'm trying to think. Um, let's see. I think that's, I think really for now, that's what I have. Um, so I told you all about what the elements are. Um, of a good demo, um, reminding you that you can create things um, at whatever stage of voiceover you are, okay? You can find a way to create a demo that will, that will serve you, okay? You know, somebody asked me, and, and please, um, if you're here, tell me. I'm so sorry because I forget who said this. Um, but they were asking, um, if I have engineering skills, um, you know, this, this, this particular person said that he was, you know, he worked in post-production or in production for 10 years before entering the world of voiceover. And he said, can I make my own demo? Yes. Yes, you can. And uh, what a great skill to possess. And what I would suggest uh, in that circumstance is that you make sure that you've got great copy and that you get at least one set, maybe two sets of ears on your demo, right? So that somebody else is giving you a little check and balance on what it is that you're doing, how long it is, like following those parameters um, of a minute to a minute 15 for a commercial, that the essence of the demo is you that it is that the production value the thing that you're actually providing for yourself is really high and really kind of zippy right that's the thing we have we need to tease the listener's ear we need to even though it's just a minute we want them there for the entire minute and we want them to go wow that was great i love that and maybe even listen to it again can you imagine how great would that be <laughs> um so see, look, I'm getting, I'm getting confirmation here from Rob Paulson, uh, Deadsville, and he's going to go look for a job at Starbucks. <laughs> um, 
Are there any questions that you have for me about any of this before I sign off? Uh, I want to say again that I'm going to teach a workshop on this at the end of October if you want more in-depth um, in depth information about it all, an opportunity to ask more in-depth questions, and then um, opportunity to, ha to have your demo reviewed. And I really want to say reviewed. You know, I think we talk about demo critiques and everybody gets really scared that you know, we're about to be shredded by somebody who's been in the business longer than we have, you know. And I just want to say my aim is uh, true. Sorry, I had to say that. Allison, you know that song? <laughs> um, Elvis Costello, just saying. Um, uh, John, the, the workshop uh, will be online. For sure online and I, I can just accommodate who wants to come to nashville for a workshop you know i can accommodate people from all over the place on for an online workshop um so with with regard to um you know my intention when i review your demo is to really look and and, and evaluate it um based on on those criteria right um, its length, whether or not it represents you, um, how's the copy, uh, all that kind of stuff, all the things that I, that I mentioned before that <coughs> that's, that's the criteria, right? Um, and I think that, um, I think, I think every demo can be improved, including my own. I haven't, aside from the promo demo that I did, um, with um, Eric Romanowski in 2019, four years ago, Whew. Um, I do my own demos. I just, again, I start with a base thing and I just keep adding, taking away, adding, taking away, all that. I make my own. I edit my own. I think if we've been in the business long enough and we're used to, we do this with our auditions all the time. We edit our auditions. We have more skills than we think we do. You, you have the capacity to do that, to make cuts, you know, and you learn as you go. Um, you know, the, the first time I did that myself was like in 2005 or six when I had a promo demo done and it was sort of handed to me and then I didn't like the order of it. And, um, and so I was like, well, I can do that. I can change the order. And then I realized, well, I can take a spot out and I can put another spot in and ta-da, you know, my own personal uh, demo producer was born. So like we do have, we do possess these little skills and, um, and if we've got the time, then we can hone the skills as we go, right? Um, so I just want you to know that if you decide to do that and if you decide to have your demo review, that, that that's what it will be like and, and I will be of encouragement to you. I'm not, not here to shred you ever 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 um, my desire is to uh, encourage and to and to uplift and to and to um, and to help you walk forward that's really what I'm after so um, Genevieve thank you for allowing me to um, talk about uh, the the tweaks that we did to your demo I really really appreciate it and um, uh, I thank you for your courage and your bravery um, and your trust. Uh, so, hi Maggie. Woo! Nice to see your face and your name. Um, fantastic. Beth, come to Nashville. Come on. Um, otherwise, the uh, workshop will be held uh, via Zoom. So, all right, you guys, I've been talking at you for 35 minutes. That's way too long. Um, so, if you've got questions after this is done, post them here. Send me a private message, whatever it is that you'd like. Um, thank you so much for being here, for your time I, and your attention. I really, really appreciate it. And, if, of course, if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. All right? Um, I'll see you in two weeks. And I'm not sure what the topic is, but it's something y'all gave me. I don't come up with these anymore. Um, you guys give them to me. So with that in mind, if you have a topic that you want me to discuss, you, uh, you let me know. 
Uh, Randy Mahoney, you're going fishing. It's a lot like auditioning. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, but there seems to be more fish than jobs. Yeah, I get that. Totally. Fishing is lovely, though. And you get to feed yourself, which, you know, that's what we do when we book a job, too. We, it, we get to feed ourselves. Um, all right, you guys. Uh, take good care. Have a great rest of your week. And I'll see you in two weeks, if not online before. All right, loves. Ciao.